To Sportsline here on News Channel 5 Plus, we continue our conversation with Robbie Stanley, who joins us uh, via phone talking some Preds hockey. Robbie, you can hear him every weekday morning with Joe Rex Road on 102.5 uh, uh, The Game. Uh, with, for the Robbie and Rex Road Show, and of course his great hockey coverage of the Nashville Predators uh, as usual. Robbie, thanks for hanging with us. Uh, you know, we talked about a bunch of different things with the Predators so far this season. Uh, you mentioned Robin Yossi just off to another great start. What an incredible player he's uh, grown into being. He's, he's just fun to watch on and off the ice. He represents this team and this city so well. How about young Dante Fabro? What, uh, this is a big year for him coming up, isn't it? It's a huge year for him, and it's interesting you bring him up because, you know, you think back to the playoff series last year against Carolina, and Dante Fabro's not in there. I mean, he was a healthy scratch for mm. that entire series, and you're thinking to yourself, all right, well, which direction is this going to go with this kid? He's a first-round pick. Uh, obviously, you want your first-round pick to not only be in the lineup for you, but really be playing a pretty big role for you at this point. So it was a big offseason for Dante Fabro. The Predators really challenged him. Number one, to get a little bit bigger and stronger. I think one of the things that they saw in his game last year was he was losing a lot of battles in front of the net and along the wall to retrieve pucks. Hmm. Uh, they worked on his skating. He hired a new trainer in the offseason as well. So lots of work he put in in the offseason. And so far, he's been really good. He's been playing alongside Roman Yossi. And I know a lot of people hear that and they say, well, I mean, look, I could play with Roman Yossi. Anybody <laughs> can play with Roman Yossi. I think I, I could, think Robbie. A, yeah, <laughs> like, I think to a certain degree that's probably true. But I think Fabro's been really good for the most part. I mean, his, his analytics, uh, without boring everybody listening to total tears, <laughs> his analytics are really good. Uh, his, he's just been, I, I think, really smart with his decision-making, and it's been, uh, I think, really encouraging his start to the season. If, if this is the Dante Fabro that they're going to get off season long, that's really good news for the Predators, probably both in the short term and the long term as well. Well, Robbie, I can't have you on without talking about goaltending. UC Soros, it's his show now. Pecorine is uh, long gone. We'll talk about him in just a second. What have you seen from the juice so far? I think for the most part, he's been really good. Uh, you know, the, the pace he was on the, at the end of the season last year when, you know, they were going down the stretch into the playoffs and he basically single-handedly drugged them into the playoffs yeah. last year <laughs> with a 940 save percentage coming down the stretch, which is just absolutely unreal. I mean, that pace was not realistic to keep up. So, you know, he's not been that good, but he's, you know, he's hovering right around, you know, 920, 925 save percentage for most of this year so far. You know, the, the Winnipeg game, I think, really kind of messed with those stats a little bit. But he comes back last night in his start against San Jose. And I thought he was really good once again. So I think for the most part, Soros has been good. I think if you're a Predators fan, you feel great about him as they move forward throughout the rest of this year. And throughout the rest of his contract as well, I mean, I think he's just now really entering into the prime of his career. So one thing that's always going to be talked about with him, he's not the biggest guy. Hmm. I mean, that, that's going to be something that you just can't change. But right now, athletically and technically, and, and speaking with people you know, like Chris Mason, who know way more about the goaltending position than I do, they're just always so blown away by his positioning, how well he moves side to side from post to post. And so far, he looks every bit as athletic and every bit as quick this year as he did a year ago, and that's good news for the Predators. By the way, how much fun is it to talk to Chris Mason about anything? <laughs> he's the best. It's a lot of fun, <laughs> and he's got some great facial hair, too. Yes. So that, that really adds to the element. Yes, it does. Uh, well, listen, uh, it's the first time I've had you on since Pecorino announced his retirement. Um, I think you know how I feel about him. He's the nicest, classiest professional athlete I've ever covered in my career. I know he means so much to that organization so much to this city to me he's really the first forever professional athlete in this city's history you know starts his career and ends his career remember steve mcnair left eddie george left all those great titans from the late 90s in the early yeah. 2000s eventually left pekka never left he's been here since day one and uh you know what is it 15 years in the nhl all 15 wearing navy blue and gold can you put into words what Pekka meant to this organization, this city, and you know, how do you how do you categorize his career? Is he a Hall of Famer? What, what are your what are your thoughts on the uh, on the departure of Pekka Rene? Yeah, well, he's I think unquestionably the greatest national predator of all time. You know, he's going to have his number retired probably very soon by the Predators uh, into the Raptors there at Bridgestone Arena, deservedly so. And uh, you brought up the, the type of person that he is. I mean, it, it, it's hard to find much better people than Pecorino. Just the way he was with his time, 
not only with us in the media, which is which was great, and you know, selfishly, that was sure. one of the reasons I really love Pecorino. But just really anybody he came in contact with. I remember people telling me stories of you know after the tornado hit in Nashville uh, a couple years ago. Pecorino's in some store in downtown Nashville buying up all the flashlights and handing them out to people, like just doing random stuff <laughs> like that that nobody ever knew about, like nobody ever talked about, but that's just the type of guy he was. And then you factor in, you know, on the ice, I mean, he's a heck of a player too. So is he a Hall of Famer? I, I don't know. I, I think yeah. he's right there kind of on the edge. Uh, you know, there, there's a, the goaltending position in hockey, it, there's such a high bar to get into the Hall of Fame. He does have a Vezina trophy, so obviously that works in his favor. And, and it could be, and maybe people think that this is dumb, and I kind of do as well, but it, it literally could be the difference of, you know, if game six and game seven for the Stanley Cup final back in 2017 goes I was a different just going to ask you about that. Difference. I was just yeah, going to ask that, you about that. I covered that game five in Pittsburgh, as, as you did as well, uh, where it was a 2-2 series, and I really thought going into that game, Robbie, maybe you did too, that uh, the Preds were primed to steal that game from the Penguins and go back home with a chance to clinch the cup. And obviously he got shelled in that game. And, you know, you wonder if, if that particular performance or the game seven the following year against uh, Winnipeg, I believe, or Edmonton, whoever it was, um, you know, you kind of wonder those performances when you really needed a great performance he didn't quite come through. Do you think, you know, the, 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 the hockey writers and the people that decide who gets into the Hall of Fame, things like that, will take those performances into account? I think they will. And, you know, I, honestly, I think that's how close it is. Like, I, I legitimately believe he's right there on the borderline uh, of a Hall of Fame. I think some people think he is a Hall of Famer. I think some people th think uh, that he's just on the outside. But it is interesting, like, I legitimately believe that if the Predators win the Cup in 2017, mm -hmm. he probably wins the Conn Smythe Trophy as the most valuable player. And if he wins the Conn Smythe Trophy, you add that to the Vesna, and then he's the Stanley Cup champion. With the, uh, the other parts of his resume that he's put together, to me it'd be pretty hard to keep him out of the Hall of Fame at that point. And that's how close it is. You think to yourself, really, like two games? Is that going to make all the difference in the world of a Hall of Fame career? But as you know, championships mean a lot when it comes to Hall of Fame uh, voting and Hall of Fame discussion. And I do think it's legitimately that close with Pecorino. we got less than a minute left. Of course, uh, your radio show, you talk about all things Nashville sports. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts on the uh, Tennessee Titans? Five and two, big game at the Colts uh, on Sunday. Two back-to-back -back huge wins over the Bills and Chiefs. Two huge wins. The number one thought I had all season long for the Titans is I'm thankful that I'm not the one that has to tackle Derrick Henry <laughs> because that looks like a really horrible thing to try to do. Yeah. Two big wins for the Titans. Uh, you know, I, I think we've seen what a difference A.J. Brown can make in the last couple of games, getting him back in there. Uh, now that he had the fast food out of his system as well, looks pretty good on Sunday against Kansas City. So I think the exciting part about the Titans is I think their offense has not hit its full stride yet. I think we're starting to see that as more and more people get healthy. Hopefully they're a little bit healthier this week. But this is a big one coming up on Sunday. If they win this game against Indianapolis on Sunday, I think by all intents and purposes, they go a pretty long way towards wrapping up that division, barring an epic collapse. Robbie, you're the best. Thanks for doing this, buddy. We'll get you back on again real soon, okay? JB, I appreciate you, my man. All right, there he goes, the great Robbie Stanley. And we're back right after this. Stanley,